Good morning. Let's get today started. Anyway, welcome to today's video. I'm trying not to show the street that I live on, but I don't know if you can tell, it is snowing. We're about to have a big snowstorm overnight and it just started, so there's like a lot of snow that's coming down. It's gonna be a very snowy at home day. <laughs> right, Luna? Hi, baby. What are you doing by the plants, actually? Oh, just your tree. Are you gonna watch me film? Okay. Okay. I feel like I haven't filmed in this little corner in my office in almost a year. This used to be my go-to spot. I'm getting a little nostalgic filming here, which is great because today's video, as you can tell by the title, is going to be a kind of annual video on my channel now, I guess. This will be my sixth year doing it, which is insane. I'm going to link all of my what I read in different years videos down below if you want a good throwback. I am definitely a bookworm. Like I love reading, I love writing. I'm an English major, I went to school for writing. I have a few publications out there myself. So I hope you also appreciate books the way that I do. I feel like this video is definitely intended for an audience of book lovers like myself. Before we get started, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below what book you are currently reading or what book was your favorite that you read in 2020. I'm always looking for more books to add to my book list for the next year. I'm very excited to read new books, so I'm definitely interested in hearing what you've enjoyed reading. Don't forget to subscribe, and I always shout out the first comment on my social media, so be sure to be following me on Instagram as well. With all that being said, though, why don't we dive into what I read in 2020? My goal was to read 20 books this year, and unfortunately, I read 15, which is still a lot. That averages out to over one book a month, which I'm proud of. I know some people read hundreds of books a year, some people read six. Even though I didn't hit my goal, I still wanted to share what I read this year, and my goal for next year is to read more books than I did this year. The way that I do this is I always start with the first book that I read in 2020 and work through the year to the most recent book that I have either just read or I'm still reading. The first book that I read about a year ago now, back in January of 2020, was Emotional Freedom by Judith Orloff. I'm sure I've mentioned this in vlogs back then. It's like a self-help book that really helps you understand your emotions. The little caption here is liberate yourself from negative emotions and transform your life. I am a big fan of self-help books. I love reading about mental health as well. I have bipolar and a lot of other things that kind of go under that category. Reading is definitely a way of helping me understand myself more. I also definitely annotate when I read and this book is just covered in blue ink from all these different things I've annotated. Emotions, transform transformations, loneliness, anxiety, depression, jealousy, compassion, anger, dreams and sleep, intellectual empaths, emotional vampires, like when you feel like people are just sucking your emotions when you're with them and you feel drained afterwards. I usually like to start my years off with something a bit more self-help, intellectual, emotional, mental health, memoir-esque. So I'm really glad that I read this because it got me kind of on the right footing for the year. The next book I read changed my life and I'm not even saying that because I reference it in almost every single video now when people ask how I did this or what am I doing and that is You Are a Badass. I'm sure you've heard about this. I've heard about it for years. I've had friends tell me I need to read it before I actually gave in and finally read it, which is like so silly. I don't know why it took me so long since people were telling me to read it. It's all in divine timing because I started my year off reading this. I still have things bookmarked in here. The chapter on money. Something that I think really changed my life this year is when I wrote my letter about my relationship to finances. That's what Jen Sincero, hope I'm saying her name right, said to do in this book. It's what she said she did before she sold her bestseller and like got a lot of money from that. As soon as I did that, I wrote out that letter, which I think I will talk more about in a video that's coming out in two weeks, so stay tuned. As soon as I started doing that, OnlyFans took off. YouTube took off. Like it's all about your mindset, your manifesting, your intentions. This book is just so inspiring in so many ways and it's not like a fluffy, you can do it self-help book, if you know what I mean. It definitely digs deeper and helps you truly understand how to 
change your life and become the person you've always wanted to be and it brings up the universe a lot we haven't woken up to how truly powerful we are or to how massively abundant our universe is or here i've underlined pay attention to suggestions and opportunities that suddenly present themselves and then i added underneath it i wrote the modeling job that somehow landed in my lap today so literally the day i was reading that it was so random i'll link that vlog above as well as down below because it was like the strangest coolest experience where i just got a dm one day and it was an opportunity that landed in my lap when I manifested that month that I wanted to seek opportunities and just make things happen. And I owe a lot to my 2020 to this book because it kind of got me on the right track. I loved it so much. And it has a very special place on the bookshelf in my office with all the other books that have kind of transformed my life. I'll try to find some links to some of these books on Amazon and see if I can link them down below for you. The next book that I read in 2020 was Note to Self by Connor Franta. Love this baby so much. As you can tell, I still have some things bookmarked. A big goal of mine and something that I love to do as a creator myself is to make sure that I read a lot of YouTubers and other creators or influencers books, not the ones that had ghostwriters, but like the actual autobiographies or memoirs or books about their journey. Um, 2019, I read a lot more and I'm looking at them on my shelf because I have a place in my office dedicated to YouTubers books because I think it's really important to support other creators, learn from their success stories, see what happened as they grew. Like Jen McAllister's was really inspiring to me when I was just first starting my YouTube channel. Channel. I read Connor Franta's other book, Anna Kana's, Katie Morton, like the list goes on. I really, really love this book. Not only is it gorgeous and has a ton of his photography involved, but Connor is just, he's an OG, he's brilliant, he's from Minnesota, so I have a lot of respect for him. Some of the things that I've had bookmarked and highlighted is when he writes, resist the urge to take a more traditional route. Your path to happiness is a far different one that sometimes seems like it'll be quicker, but ends up being an anxiety-ridden pain in the ass but it'll be worth it. No one is your particular blend of smart, kind, thoughtful, expressive, creative, empathetic, and driven. You'll see that one day. I'm pretty sure I have that written in a page in my journal. Oh, he's just so good. You're a bud covered in snow in the garden of your mind. Just wait for spring. Oh my God, the metaphor. It was a great book to read in February. I really loved it. <laughs> the next book that I read this year was To Hell With The Hustle, thanks to Alicia Marie. She was reading this early spring, so I picked it up because she recommended it. And it definitely touches on the negative tone of having a hustle mentality because life today is just like go 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 and you want to hustle you want to grind you want to like be as busy as possible but you know it's still important to have boundaries and make sure you take time to care for yourself it says reclaiming your life in an overworked overspent and overconnected world so as a content creator and somebody that is overworked overspent and overconnected this was really nice to kind of bring me back down to earth and center myself quit the cycle of more more and more question the noise around us set boundaries push back the demands rediscover the fundamentals that make us human i'd put it up there next to like you are a badass but it's not as deep if that makes sense and it has more of a christian tone which i am not a practicing christian so a lot of that i couldn't connect with but if you are then definitely pick up this book because he talks a lot about god and your relationship to him as well it just really talks about slowing down and how we were not meant to live such a crazy life and how it's important to work hard but not burn yourself out completely so as a content creator this helped me a lot the next book was a christmas gift and it is ray and joan by lisa Napoli. Oh my goodness. I think this was the first book that I read or was currently reading as we entered quarantine because as soon as we did, I like binged it. It's so good. It's literally about the McDonald's fortune, like the McDonald's fast food chain and how that came to be. It says the man who made the McDonald's fortune and the woman who gave it all away. So he founded McDonald's or is part of it. And then this is one of his wives and she, before she passed away, donated so much money to so many different organizations and things. What's awesome is I had no idea they were also from Minnesota or at least lived there for a long time so again I felt connected and every time they mentioned St. Paul or like other places here I was like I know that place this is definitely one of those books that makes you want to research when you finish reading it on the people and more about the story if you like books that kind of are about modern history or just things that have happened by real people I as I get older realize I do appreciate those books more and more and it's so crazy to learn about people's success and what everyone went through on this crazy journey called life like here they are Ray and Joan is a quint 
quintessentially American tale of corporate intrigue and private passion, a struggling Mad Men era salesman with a vision for a fast food franchise that would become one of the world's most enduring brands and a beautiful woman willing to risk her marriage and her reputation to promote controversial causes that touched her deeply. So it literally just goes through how they became as successful and wealthy, like wealthy, wealthy as they did. It says ultimately gave away billions of dollars. It's compelling, it's amazing. I can't believe lives like that happened. It also made me invest a lot of stocks into McDonald's after. The next book that I read might be surprising and it's something that I wish I was forced to read in school. We read other books about this in middle school, but I'm also appreciative that I read it when I did because as soon as we went into quarantine, I felt very stuck to prevent myself from feeling too like woe is me. I decided to uh, gain a little perspective and I read The Diary of Anne Frank. I think everyone should read this at least once in their life. The copy that I have is full of photos and actual entries and it's just very very touching especially at a time when you know we felt so stuck quarantined and isolated to remember that you know she was stuck quarantined isolated for over two years so it definitely helped me realize I have so much to be grateful for and that it's really not that bad the way that we were quarantining it's a heavy heavy book but it's also really funny because obviously the perspective is from a teenage girl so the things that she writes about her crushes how she talks about how annoyed she is with her parents and how they get into fights there's humor in it even though there is also that fourth wall of dramatic irony because we we know how it's going to end and that changes the tone of this immensely. But it's also a book that I think everybody needs to read at least once in their life and I'm ashamed that it took me this long to read it myself. Also her writing is absolutely beautiful, not to mention this is translated too and she was 13 when she wrote this. There's so much that she's written in here that I've copied into my journal that either I felt like I related to or I just needed to be reminded of. She writes, laziness may appear attractive but work gives satisfaction. Or when she writes, I hear the the ever approaching thunder which will destroy us too. I can feel the sufferings of millions and yet if I look up into the heavens I think that it will all come all right, that this cruelty too will end and the peace and tranquility will return again. She's 13. It was beautiful. It was such a great book to read during a hard time to be reminded of a story like this. We went through nothing close to what she went through. The next book that I read is by one of my all-time favorite authors for that time period. I have like favorite authors for modern contemporary, current fiction, classical, all those genres. But for modern nonfiction, journalist, biography-esque, Joan Didion. Holy shit. I am so in love with her. Her mind is brilliant. The way she writes is absolutely stunning. She's one of my all-time favorite writers, the way that she connects her thoughts to her words, nobody can replicate it. Here she is in the 70s with her husband and her daughter in their Malibu home. The book, The Year of Magical Thinking, really focuses on the loss after her husband very, I mean, I, this isn't giving it away because it's like in the first chapter, but after her husband unexpectedly passes away and then her daughter has a ton of health complications, it takes you through her journey of a really difficult, challenging time in her life when she was grieving, going through loss, and then what her daughter was going through it is very heavy but the way that she writes it with so much emotion and strength it makes you want to cry and laugh at the same time and I personally felt very connected to it because of what I um my family and I went through going, growing up and unexpected tragedies and trauma like she went through so much trauma the way the book begins life changes fast life changes in the instant you sit down to dinner and life as you know it ends. Like that one sentence, you sit down to dinner and life as you know it ends. In our lifetime, we're all going to go through that second where there is a second where everything was normal and then you blink and life will never be the same and it is hard and I don't want to cry. I have that memory sitting down to dinner, whatever that dinner was to me in life and having my life change as I knew knew it. So the way she writes is beautiful. The way she writes is the type of writing that you want to read aloud instead of in your head. This book I want to reread like right now and I became so obsessed with it after I read it and I was telling my mom about it for days. I watched the documentary on Joan Didion on Netflix, highly recommend. She's still alive. She's like the sweetest old lady that 
you can just see what she went through in her eyes like all that hurt and pain this is one of those books that i would stay up until sunrise reading and underlining and finishing and that doesn't happen often oh my god i could talk about this book all day joe didion the year of magical thinking even the fact that i won't give it away but it's amazing the next book that i read is another book that i remember i stayed awake until 6 30 in the morning finishing reading it took me by surprise because i've had this book in my possession for a couple of years i've thrifted it maybe five six years ago and I finally decided to read it now I think it found me at the perfect time and that is orphan number eight if you have not heard of this book it's by Kim Van Alchemade I hope I said that right brilliant it took me by the throat I was not expecting to be that attached as soon as I was to the characters I was not expecting to be that like interested in the subject because it's a very unique story and then it surprised me as well because it's an LGBT well is it I mean the character just happens to be there aren't many books that do that so well and integrate it so flawlessly i just really really love a good female love story like that and there aren't a lot of books that you find about that and i stand for it basically orphan eight is about a young girl that becomes an orphan very quickly gets put into this infant home where the children end up being medical experiments for new medicine treatments dr solomon subjects rachel to an experimental course of x-ray treatments that establish the doctor's reputation while risking the little girl's health now it's 1954 and rachel is a nurse in the hospice wing of the old Hebrews home when elderly Dr. Solomon becomes her patient. It's brilliantly done. It's one of those classic like two time period shifts tales where we jump from when she's a child and innocent helpless kid that's put into this home and treated like a lab rat. So it jumps to when she's now a nurse and the person that experimented on her is her patient and she has that ethical question of do I keep her alive? Do I make her struggle like she hurt me? I think I really liked this book as an LGBTQ book as well because it takes place in the 50s and hearing a love story during such a taboo time in New York like they were roommates. It's just brilliantly done in such a tender way that I really really loved it. It kept me up all night. Highly recommend. Even though the story itself is fictional, cases like this did happen. They have actual articles and things in here from like real photographs, the actual home, and how all these orphans were actually experimented on. My god, I love that book so much. The next book that I read is Hope, a Tragedy. It was okay. It was really weird, but it was about Anne Frank, so I thought maybe it'd be good because I just read The Diary of Anne Frank, but it's like a fiction book about her it's like this weird tale where this man finds Anne Frank hiding in his attic and she's like this old woman that ended up surviving and he doesn't know what to do with her <clears throat> it was just a weird fictional book not for me the next book that I read was called the year that follows again it was pretty decent it is roughly based around the 9-11 tragedy but her brother passes away in the Twin Towers on the day that he finds out he may have a kid out there with his ex so then she feels like it's her obligation to determine what whether or not if that's his child and try to like adopt him or see if she can be in his life. I read it, I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't read it again and recommend it. The next book that I read, my friend actually loaned to me so I don't physically have it anymore, but it was called Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered. It was so great. They have a crime podcast and they talk about how they kind of got to that position and their lives in California. And I really love hearing memoirs, like I've said. So it was cool to see how they started and they would tell all these stories growing up and just giving advice. So I, I'm a sucker for a good memoir. <laughs> the next book that I read, was called Songs of the Humpback Whale by Jodi Picoult. Jodi Picoult is my favorite current fiction writer of like our era. I love the way she puts stories together. I love how there was always a twist at the end. This current one was about a mother and a daughter that's running away, ends up at a farm, and there's tragedy, and there's growth, and there's love, and it's there's a plot twist. I love Jodi Picoult. I've actually written to her before. Oh my god, I fangirled so hard because I was still in high school, and I wrote to her being like, I want to be a writer, and she responded the next day, which just blew my mind. It's really good growing up I think to have people that you are inspired by and look up to and as a young adolescent to have her there believing in me made the biggest difference. Highly recommend, love her book so much. The next book I read I found at a thrift store and I was just amazed it was there because I've been meaning to read this forever and it is called Girl Heart Girl by Lucy. I can never say her last name, Sutcliffe. If you are an OG YouTube stan, maybe you remember her because she used to be from the channel Kaylin and Lucy. I was obsessed with their channel back in the glory days when they were together. They were actually one of the first queer couples on YouTube that I discovered and fell in love with and realized there was like a whole community of couples like that that I started binging. It helped me in my personal growth and my own journey so much. It follows not only Lucy's own 
journey of realizing she was gay and coming out in a very small London town, but it also follows her love story and how she met Kaylin on Tumblr. It's like the classic Tumblr love story and I think that's why I love it so much because I'm from that Tumblr era, but she met Kaylin on Tumblr, they fell in love, and then she took a big risk and she flew halfway around the world to meet her. By then they were dating for like a year and the rest is history. Even though it's like put into a young adult teen category and it's by Scholastica. Why did I say Scholastica? Oh my gosh. And it's by Scholastic. I'm 25 and I loved it. I already felt like I knew so much of their story from their YouTube channel and following them on Instagram. But then I got a different side of it while reading Girl Heart Girl. And I remember in their videos when she was writing this, when she announced it, when they got it published, when she was signing it, they went on a small book tour. Oh, the good old days before, spoiler alert, they broke up. Moving on, after I read that book, I took a pretty big break from reading. Life just got really, really busy towards the end of summer. So I was reading something very slowly that I ended up finishing like a month ago, unfortunately. But that is Writing Down the Bones by Natalie Goldberg. So you may recognize that name if you are a big writing geek because she's pretty well known in the writing community. She's also from Minnesota, I believe, or she lived here for a long time because she taught at the University of Minnesota for a while and she's lived here. And every time she mentions a cafe in Uptown, I'm like, oh my God, I've been there. This is kind of a how-to book. It's small personal essays where every single chapter can be read individually as like a short essay. And I'm pretty sure in certain classes that I took, professors that I've had had just copied a couple essays for us to read. It's basically about how to write. You know, you hear certain prompts or certain techniques or tips that she has and you realize like, wow, I need to try that. It also somewhat feels like a memoir because it takes you through certain experiences that she went through in her life. It just covers so many interesting corners of writing. Writers end up writing about their obsessions. So true. When she talks about poetry and how she gets confused, she says, I forgot that I am not the poem. Poetry was my senior thesis in college. So my whole like thesis, if I had one, was a poetry project. It was like a hundred pages of poems that I wrote. That that line I have underlined and start like I forgot that I am not the poem because oh mm, if a writer is all at once everything an architect French cook farmer and at the same time a writer is none of these oh my god everything in here is just amazing so this is also a book that lives in my office because next to all of the youtuber books that I have on my shelf I have a section of my own publications that I've written and then next to that I have books like this that kind of tie off of that and the last book that I read in 2020 that I'm also currently finishing because I just started it a couple nights nights ago, I'm already halfway through, so that's pretty good, is An Invisible Thread. I had never heard of this before, but it is a New York Times bestseller, and I'm actually surprised that I've never heard about it because it's a true story. It's basically about Laura who wrote it and how on her way to work one day, she sees a small child panhandling in New York City, and instead of ignoring him or giving him money, she invites him out to lunch and gets to know him and his story and his life, and it's so gripping because you learn about not only what Laura went through, but about the small boy and like his life story and his family and oh there are real pictures in here oh I can't wait to see those whatever made me notice him on that street corner so many years ago is clearly something that cannot be extinguished no matter how relentless the forces aligned against it some may call it spirit some may call it heart it drew me to him as if we were bound by some invisible unbreakable thread I really really love it so far it's very gripping so that is the book that I'm currently reading and finishing 2020 with because it's still currently December it's not the new year yet but I am pre-filming this but that's everything I read in 2020 2020, I did get a couple of books for Christmas that I will be reading this year, such as Jodi Picoult's new book that she came out with this year, The Book of Two Ways. And then Tyler actually got me this new plant parent book. This is more like a coffee table book. It's all about plants and how to take care of them. You can never know too much about how to take care of your plants. And if you want to know more about my plants, I actually have a full house plant tour of like 100 plus plants that I own. So I'll link that video up above as well as down below. With all of the other years that I've done with books that I have read, in certain years those we link down below thank you so much for watching don't forget to comment down below the book that you are either currently reading or your favorite book from 2020 i'm still looking for books to add to my list of books i will read in 2021 and then in a year from now we can look back and see what i ended up reading happy new year i'll see you real soon with a, another exciting video bye i was so hurt and upset that i never gave him another chance